it's what simplicity in life really is all about. I really believe that we begin this journey on earth as little children, and I think we're supposed to end it as little children. You know, they always joke and they say, you come into the world in diapers and you go out in diapers. Wow. It's fantastic. It's really and to me, there's a lot of philosophy in that. And sometimes that's the way it's supposed to be. Because I really believe that we spend most of our life on our journey learning what I call the gift of humility, the gift of openness, the gift of honesty, the gift of simplicity. But we have to go through struggle. And sometimes that struggle is painful. I've often said the higher power of God is always trying to teach us something very special and very beautiful, and the mothers in this room know exactly what I'm talking about. Did you ever notice something when you gave birth to a child? It was not something I would call a wonderful, phenomenal experience. <laughs> that little child deep down inside of you, getting ready to be born, did not want to be born. That little child basically wanted to stay there. It was nice inside their womb. And then those doctors kept telling you to push. And the little sucker inside kept saying, stop pushing. <laughs> so the first struggle of life was already taking place. You began the journey. And to me, that's the greatest example in God's creation that will teach us what life is supposed to be. We're supposed to go through experiences, and our experiences will one day bring us strength and bring us the gift. I really believe that for every negative, there's a positive. I said this so many times growing up in that wonderful, fantastic city of Camden, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and being able to experience the gift of that wonderful city, mm -hmm. and being able to get, see the gift of my very extremely wonderful, dysfunctional family. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Italian, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. That's the fun part of it. Now, growing up in South Camden, uh, I used to call my house Grand Central Station. My father had, everybody came in and out of our house, and I kept saying to my dad, who are those people? Said, that's your guma. That's your guma. So I really figured it out. I got about 100 gumas, about 400 gumas. That means they're my friends. And basically, we just kind of had like a big family spirit. It was crazy. It was dysfunctional. It was nuts. You know, went through a lot of craziness. But you know what? I look back on all that stuff today, and I realize that's what the journey was supposed to be to be able to get us to a gift of simplicity and a gift of love. My father used to say some wonderful things. Here's a man with a second grade education. He taught me so much about life and about simplicity. Very simple, simple down to earth man. He used to say things like, you don't know what it is, Vinzi, to get up until you fall down. Don't be afraid to fall down. But then you have to learn how to get up. The philosophies he taught me so much were so powerful. And I always tell the story, and I love telling the story. When I was a kid in Camden back in the 40s, because I was actually born in 1940. I'm one of those you know, senior guys, what can I tell you? <laughs> but one of the things I love so much about that was my father used to send me on a journey when I was a kid through the streets of Camden with a bucket and a shovel. My father was an old timer from Italy. He had a garden in our backyard and a garden in the railroad yards on 2nd Street. And I used to go around the streets collecting horse manure. My father would put it in the garden, he'd process it, it was wonderful, it was great. And then my father used to have beautiful plants, tomato plants, eggplants, pepper plants, all kinds of stuff, unbelievable. But one day I was in the backyard and my father said to me, Vinzi, come here. Of course, in those days, if your father said, come here, you come here. <laughs> if not, your teeth went from here back to here. It was a simple world back then. <laughs> And he said, and then he picked up a handful of soil. I said, picked it up, it was moist and it was black. And he said, taste it. I said, you gotta be nuts. I put all the horse manure on the ground, you want me to taste the soil. He said, you listen. He says, you got to learn. He says, see that horse manure, it's gone. It's been changed into life-giving soil to give you life. And I learned something from that today that You've got to go through a lot of struggles, a lot of hurt, because we have a war going on inside of us. I call it the war of the ego versus the spirit. And our ego gets a little carried away a lot of times. You know, and we really think that we really do have answers, but we don't. The spirit inside of us tells us just to be alive and to live and to celebrate life mm -hmm. and be able to celebrate the gift of that child. You know, I was a very lucky man when I went to therapy because I had a fantastic therapist. And People always ask me about this watch that I wear. <clears throat> and the watch has the characters from the penis comic strip on it. 
And what I love so much, because when I wrote my second book, I put a whole chapter to my wonderful friends from Peanuts, you know, are fantastic. But what my therapist taught me was that inside of all of us, there, there lurks a little Snoopy. It's our spirit, it's the energy we have inside of us. It's called the spirit of life. The beautiful thing about life is you can't control it, you can't organize it, and you can't structure it. You have to be able to face it through the gift of faith and be open and let the spirit of life work through you. That's the key, the key for all of us. I always love telling the story. Now, I, I, by the way, I got about 5,000 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember the, remember the story where I, I was in 1979, 78, I forget, one of those years anyway. I, was, I actually started this program, Starting Point, way back in 1977 in South Philadelphia. And the original starting point was a halfway house for alcoholics. It also was a, uh, a soup kitchen. You know, we had a little house in South Philly, and I still joke about that house today. I get a kick out of that simplicity. Our first house we had of starting point, we had uh, a house of 23rd and more in the Point Breeze section in South Philly. And the house had, part of the roof was missing, and a few windows were missing. You know, so we had tarps over everything. That was our original house. It was fantastic. You know, I used to love it. You know, what I love so much about the simplicity of that house was that the gift of faith and the higher power were always working through the spirit of people. And so one of the things we basically had a gentleman come to visit us, and this has been the story of my journey here for a long time. He came to visit us and he said, he said, Father was a priest at the time, he said, Father, what, what do you need to get this house going? I said, well, I'd like to have the rest of the roof. <laughs> the rest of the windows <laughs> and be able to fix the inside up. So what he did was he donated ten thousand dollars to us to put the roof on, take care of things. He said, keep it quiet. And he said, What else do you need? I said, some paint. Always love this one. He worked for a place in Philadelphia <coughs> called the Philadelphia Electric Company. And so he said, Let me get you some paint. I said, I'll borrow some. <laughs> 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 He went to the Philadelphia Electric Company and bought 75 gallons oh. of green lead-based paint. <laughs> we painted both of our houses inside and out with that stuff. <coughs> it's a wonder my life. <laughs> Drive on the corner of 23rd and Moore, you will see two green houses. <laughs> Those houses are still standing and they're still green. <laughs> but I wave about this because I look at life in a very simple way today. The simplicity of a child, a little Snoopy, a little gift inside of us. Just to enjoy life and keep it simple. I mean, it's gratitude. We woke up this morning, fantastic. Be able to say a prayer, to be able to be open to the course of the day, and not to look for personal recognition. Just to realize the fact that the higher power is working through each and every one. Now, I'll never forget the first time I gave my first real talk. I joke with this crazy lady a lot, Mark, and I joke with her a lot because, you know, years ago when I was a priest, I used to spend like 10 hours preparing my, my, my talks for Sunday. I'd write them out, and then I would get in the pulpit and practice them. Then I got up there and about, it took about three minutes, everybody fell asleep. It's a <laughs> my first real talk I ever gave is when I finally learned to get in touch with the Spirit. And that happened back in 1978 when a gentleman asked me to give a talk at a rehab on spirituality and recovery. And it was 10 of 1, and he said, why don't you give a talk at 1 o'clock today? <laughs> and I said, for real, you're for real, aren't you? He said, yeah. He said, what do you want me to talk on? I said, he said, spirituality. <clears throat> So I'm a real good codependent, so I said, of course, yes. Because <laughs> nobody had taught me the word no yet. Right. So as a result, I got up there and I gave the talk, and the talk lasted about 50 minutes. In fact, I still joke about that. One of my therapists here, Teresa Barrett, some of you know Teresa. Oh, yeah. Oh. Teresa was at that talk as a, as a patient wow. back in 1978. And when I finished the talk, uh, Bill came up to me and he said, you did a good job, Vince. Come back once a month and give the talk. I said, Bill, I'd love to. I don't know what I said. <laughs> so he had taped it. He gave it to me. When I, on the way home, I played it in my car and got a lot out of it. It was pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's what life is supposed to be. It's this spontaneity of just being able to live, mm. to enjoy each moment.
keep these moments simple because all of us in this room are all lovers. Congratulations. Mm. It's fantastic. We have this wonderful energy inside of us. Do we have answers? No, I hope we never do. It's more fun just to have the questions. It's the wonderment. It's the gift of life. The secret of life. That's really what it's all about. And it's all about simplicity. It's being able just to enjoy each and every moment to the best of our ability. And one day to be able to look at even the struggles and hurt and pain and stuff we have to go through for our growth and realize that's all part of it. It's all part of the ride, as I say. I joke and I say every one of us in this room, we have a round trip ticket, congratulations. <laughs> Which means you're on the ride. And eventually you gotta, t you gotta take that return trip. I mean, you can make believe you're not going to take it. You can have all the facials you want, all the stuff you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> the men can dye their hair. They can actually, you know, wear shirts with the thing open, with the collars on. Rent convertibles when they're in their 60s. And that's what they're <laughs> you're still going to make the round trip. Too. <laughs> I don't care what I do. You know, I don't care how much you do on this earth, eventually the boss is going to say, come on home, come on home, it's your journey. And I guess the most important thing is to realize the fact that on the journey, we just take time every day, just to simplify and keep life simple, and maybe a little bit at a time to become more childlike, to rediscover that child inside of you. And I really believe there's so much energy and beauty inside of every human being I really believe in that concept was said so long to, a long time ago. You know, there's no such thing as a bad person. Mm -hmm. It's bad behavior. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at the aspect of life. We look at the world around us and we see all kinds of stuff going on. You know, you know why? Because we live in a real world. It's called reality. We have to be able to look at it through positive eyes and learn from it and grow from it. Now your songs this morning talked all about these two beautiful ladies. Mm -hmm. the songs they set up here today. Fantastic. It's all the stuff of putting stuff inside and being able every day just to be who we are. See, to me, the gift of life, a real spirituality, comes around one word. The word is real simple and it's real basic, called acceptance. Mm -hmm. Acceptance is the ultimate spiritual word. We are who we are. We have to learn to be who we are. And that simple, beautiful thing allows us to be able to connect to that and connect to each other. And so what I want to do today, real simple, in a real simple spirit, is realize the fact that the higher power is kind of neat and probably fantastic. God's a wonderful guy. I call God the boss, by the way. The boss is great. You know what happens? Every time you get a little cocky, ego gets out of control. The boss comes along and smacks you on the head. <laughs> That's why my recommendation, if you really want to grow as a spiritual person, it's real simple, okay? Make sure you watch a wonderful movie called The Lion King. Mm -hmm. To me, it's called The Circle of Life. I'll show you how the higher power works. For years, we babysat my niece, Hannah. And Hannah was real small, and every morning she would stay overnight at our house. She'd come to me, and she'd shake me, and she'd say, 5.30 in the morning. She'd say, Uncle Vince, the lion. <laughs> we go downstairs and we watch Lion King. When the movie was over, she'd say, Lion King. <laughs> so we watch it a second. When it was done, she said, Lion King. <laughs> we watch it a third time. I think in the course of babysitting her, I saw Lion King at least 82 times. <laughs> Now I realize today there's a purpose behind that. Because <laughs> I was learning about life. And life's that wonderful circle of life. We're all connected to each other. The people that have gone before us are here in this room today. The spirits here. Mm -hmm. Nobody dies. Your energy just carries on and pass it on. That's all. So the concept of it. And I always love my favorite person in the Lion King is Rafiki. Yeah. You know, the monkey with the stick. <laughs> That's the higher power. And Simba got a little cocky, feeling sorry for himself, going through changes. And Rafiki comes along, smacks him on the head with the stick and says, come on, sucker, get your act together and get back where you're supposed to be. That's the higher power to me. And every time we think we have the answers to stuff, we don't. Something will come along and wake you up. So please, keep life simple and keep it basic and celebrate who you are every day. If you do that, everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm.
So I'm going to do a closing meditation with you, and hopefully it will help you to kind of enjoy the rest of this day, your party, what's really going on, and begin to experience life. Because I have the wonderful opportunity tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. to get on an airplane and fly out to Montana mm. and visit my daughter. Yeah. And that's wonderful. Two connections and a stagecoach, and I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about wilderness. Tomorrow, next week, we're very interesting. <laughs> the closest supermarket is about six miles away. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. But it's a fun part of life. You learn to look at life through different eyes and see different people in different situations. And so I'm going to get to spend a lot of time with three beautiful little grandkids. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to enjoy them. And they're going to run me ragged. Mm -hmm. But that's what it's all about. That's how it's supposed to be. Right? So I keep it simple. <coughs> I'd like you to close your eyes, take a nice deep breath, and let yourself go on a very special journey today. Visualize yourself leaving this room and entering a beautiful golden corridor. At the end of the corridor, there is a huge but beautiful golden door. I'd like you to walk towards that door. As you get closer and closer to the door, I'd like you to walk up to it and touch it. It's a magical door. As it swings open, you'll notice on the other side of the door, nothing but total darkness. Way off in the darkness, there is a beautiful, simple, but small golden light shining. I would like you to walk towards that light. As you get closer and closer to the light, it becomes even brighter and more beautiful and more powerful until you are able to walk into the light. This morning, visualize yourself surrounded by the golden light of peace and serenity, the golden light of kindness. Bathe yourself in that beautiful, beautiful light. And as you bathe yourself today in that beautiful light, that golden light of peace and serenity, notice coming towards you in the distance, a beautiful, beautiful pink light. As it gets closer and closer to you, it becomes brighter and more beautiful until you are surrounded totally by the pink light of love. Visualize yourself surrounded by these two beautiful lights, these two beautiful energies, serenity, peacefulness, and the energy of love. And as you bathe yourself in these lights, notice walking towards you from that beautiful light of love, a little child. As that child gets closer and closer to you, that little child comes right up to you, looks you in the eye. And as you look at that beautiful little child, you notice that little child is you. That child leaps into your arms, hugs you, and says to you, I've been waiting for you for a long time. Somewhere along the line, we got separated, but now we are back together. I have come to give you my gift, the gift of love, the gift of life. And as you hold on to that child and hug that child, and just feel the energy and the gift of that beautiful little child coming to teach us to be our teacher, to be our guide. And I'd like you now to take that beautiful little child, walk with that child, and walk back towards the golden door, down the corridor, and back into this room. But notice, as long as you keep that little child with you, the golden light of peace and serenity, the energy and the pink light of love will be with you. And as you come into this room, your little child gets very excited, for there are many other little children in this room. Now that little child has someone to play with, to celebrate with, to have fun with, and to enjoy life. Visualize all of us as beautiful little children being able to dance, play, celebrate, and just enjoy life and celebrate life. And know that as long as we hold on to each other and stay connected to each other, we will never have to be alone again. 
We walk the journey of life in conjunction with each other. Our children have taught us some beautiful things. Don't be afraid to play, to celebrate, and to enjoy life. We are all God's children. We're all connected to each other. No matter how different we are, no matter how different we believe, no matter what happens, we're bonded by a common, common thread, the energy and the gift of love. And so today, pray, celebrate, enjoy, laugh, have a good time, but realize and be grateful for the gift of life, for the celebration of life, and know that we are being taught and we are being led by a beautiful little child. God bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>